Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Tommy Knockers by Stephen King. So, this is actually a reread for me. I listened to it via audiobook. Big old read on audiobook. I think it was about 30 odd hours or so. And um, yeah, I've been taking some notes as I've gone along, so I'm going to start discussing the book. Do we have a blurb? We do have a blurb. The Tommy Knockers, coming back to Haven, Maine, had been like walking into a nightmare for Jim. It all looked the same the house, the furniture, the woods. But it was in the woods that his friend Bobby had stumbled over the odd, nearly buried object, had felt a particular tinge as she knelt down and brushed the soft earth away. And looking back, that had been the start of a terrible, terrifying transformation of an unremarkable place into something alien and hideous. A place of unrest and insane powers. So what I will say about this book is, um, you know, it, it's definitely King doing his small town thing. And um, you actually get quite a lot of um, you know world building on the characters before anything really happens uh, so I've got some quotes and stuff I wanted to highlight uh, only obsessives worry about obsession which I think fantastic uh, and also very true <laughs> uh, we had a mention of sun dogs as well which um, King's actually got a story called the sun dog and uh, his son Joe Hill has also got a story that reminded me of the sun dog so it's kind of an ongoing thing uh, we have a quote here which feels pretty apt to me because uh, I'm living alone. <laughs> the trouble with living alone she had discovered and the reason why most people she knew didn't like to be alone even for a little while was that the longer you lived alone, the louder the voices on the right side of your brain got. Another great quote, the American government didn't tell lies. Not telling lies is what made it great. Uh, we had something that reminded me of Charles Heathcote as well. So Charlie has his wool gathering videos here on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, King said that the writer character, uh, he went wool gathering during his poetry reading. And this scene, yeah, th that entire chapter was a long old chapter. I wrote down here, there's a lot of just drunk dudes arguing about nuclear power and thinking they're clever when they're just irritating. And, I mean, I'm sure King was trying to make a point. I think even when he wrote this, he himself was kind of at the worst of his alcohol and drug abuse, you know? So, um, maybe it's like you know, reflecting his life in a bit of a true story, but uh, it was pretty dull to read, I I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Alright, so a few more highlights from uh, Stephen King. I'm now slightly over halfway through. This audiobook has taken me forever to get through, because it's about 30 odd hours long, but I'm about halfway through now. So a great line, creative people have creative breakdowns. There was also a shout out for Peter Straub, which I thought was interesting, because King and Straub have worked together um, on, oh shit, what they called? Black House and The Talisman, uh, which I've read both of those, so that was interesting. It's, it finally started to pick up about six or seven hours into the audiobook, which is crazy, because that's the length of some audiobooks. Um, we're sort of discovering more about the aliens, and we get this line, Flying saucers were more than passe, they were a joke. And then a bit later it gets even more nuts, because someone thinks that her photo of Jesus is speaking to her. In fact, Jesus is telling her how to make crazy things. That's kind of one of the cool things about this book is that everyone kind of gets the ability to make these crazy inventions by, you know, taking apart radios and putting them back together and stuff. A couple more great lines I wanted to highlight as well. Perhaps perfect happiness occurs only in the context of small discordances. And incest is one of those time-honoured country traditions of which poets rarely write. Okay, so I've been listening to some more Stephen King. Uh, I'm currently about 16 hours away from the end now. I've got a few bits that I want to update you guys on. There was the phrase, as crazy as a shithouse rat, which I think is an excellent phrase. Um, when someone you love dies, it leaves a black hole in the middle of your heart. Uh, which, I don't know, I think everyone can relate to in some way or another. Uh, another great phrase, he wanted to tell them that they could take a flying fuck at a rolling donut. I'm going to use that in real life. Uh, the characters also, because they're from Maine, and it's a Maine thing, I think. They keep saying, oh, yeah, which amuses me. And then we have this little line here, which I think is uh, quite telling of both characters, really. Bozeman couldn't see how someone could eat an apple and drink a beer at the same time, especially in the morning, but Gardner was doing it. So yeah, at the moment, we're getting to the uh, denouement. I'm up to um, part, uh, part book three, which I think is of three. So yeah, hoping to get it finished within the next few days. So there's another great quote here. It would be... A it could be as unwise to wear your personality on your sleeve as it was to wear your heart there. And then finally, one thing I really enjoyed is the fact that all the citizens get used to their air of haven to the point at which if they leave the town, they get sick. 
uh, and they actually get canisters of this bottled air and breathing masks to go and explore this spaceship and the irony there is you know if anybody from outside a haven breathed that air it would kill them there were a lot of whitewashing your fence references which was interesting to me because i recently read tom sawyer and obviously it was referring to that uh, we have a uh, mention of the shop right at the end as well so that i believe they took away the uh, alien spaceship and the shop are like a recurring government entity in king's work uh, the ending wasn't as bad as i remembered but it was still uh... and uh, overall yeah the reread definitely wasn't as good as the initial read for me all in all i guess i enjoyed this reread i would give it a 3.5 out of 5 this time which would certainly be a downgrade from what i gave it the first time i read it it didn't quite hold up to the reread and, and just on audiobook it was way too long but um yeah, I'm, I'm still glad I reread it. I probably won't reread it again in any hurry, but uh, it's always a pleasure to read some Stephen King. So there we have it. That's what I thought of the Tommy Knockers. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.